We're jumping into part two of this dual battery wireless keyboard build. We're going over the prototyping, we're going to be doing some acrylic cutting, we're going to be doing some adjustments, and then maybe, finally, we can turn this into something that actually works. It's a lot of things to cover, so let's go! Last time we went over my initial design thoughts and how I was going to attack this project. We also went over most of the electronics to make sure everything was going to work before I even got started on designing the case. I've actually been thinking about this keyboard for quite a long time now. I was originally thinking of making it as small and compact as possible, but also stuffing in as much battery power as I could. I always strive to do things a little bit differently, at least visually, and this keyboard was no exception. Because of that, I wanted to design things a little bit bigger than they needed to be, just so that I could throw in some other visual elements. I kind of had a vision of almost like a cyber deck, but without the deck part, I guess, without the computer part, is just the keyboard part, but more of like the the aesthetics of a cyberpunk cyber deck. I actually might turn this design into a cyber deck later at some point, but for right now, let's stick to the keyboard. So I first thought, let's just go with a rectangle and then add the components kind of around the keyboard part so that it is still basically a rectangle. I did a lot of iterations of this and eventually I came to something that looked a little bit like this, but there was something about it that was just a little too conventional. And then I thought, what if I put an integrated hand handle into the case. Since this was going to be a more portable design, I figured having an integrated handle would not only look cool, but actually be functional. After that, I figured maybe I could arrange things in a way that was maybe a little bit more dynamic and interesting looking. Even though there are only a few 45 degree angles, plus I'm shifting some to the left hand side for a more asymmetrical design, I figured this was just enough to push it more into that vibe of cyberpunk slash cyberdeck style. Also adding to this look were the additions of some toggle switches and some very large LEDs. Once I had the placement and all the components basically where I wanted them and was happy with it, I then set out to turn my design into a physical object. Because the laser cutting is pretty straightforward, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that while I keep rambling on about the design. Everyone knows that transparency is more cyberpunk than opaqueness. So I'm making this out of acrylic, as I have done with many other projects projects and I will do many more in the future. Because I have so many components going on with this build, the hardest part by far was just figuring out the layer stack. I basically had to figure out not only the best way to hold the components in a 2D space, but also a 3D space. So your height or Z axis is basically your stack of layers of acrylic. I have designed like this many times before in the past, but this one by far was the most complex. Usually I can keep everything in my head when I'm mapping things out in vector space, but this one was a bit too much for my brain. Not only do I have nine layers, but each one needs to be cut somewhat differently. Not only do I have to make room for all the components, but I also have to make room for traces and space for the wires to go from each of the components, and that got a bit tricky. Because of that, I figured it might be worth it to go ahead and spend the time and make a 3D model of this. I am basically a beginner at 3D modeling, so this took me way longer than I'd like to admit. This took me about two weeks to complete, probably more, but it was worth it because it really helped as a visual aid to line up all the pieces and all of the traces I needed to make in each of the layers. And how I made all the layers was basically measuring every part of the components in every dimension and then either changing the layer stack to compensate for that or making cutouts where I needed them, and then also compensating for how the wires were going to go through this 3D space. It's basically just a ton of measuring and then checking and double checking to make sure your measurements are correct on every single component. After I had my 3D model, I basically went layer by layer and just looked at what was there and not there and then made that map in a 2D vector space. Once I had everything mapped out, I could then finally take it to my laser and collect all of my acrylic sheets that I needed, all nine of them, and then get to work starting to cut it. I could have made this in any color, and originally I was going to go with just clear acrylic, but in case you didn't know, the future is yellow, so I got fluorescent yellow, and it actually looks really cool. Even in regular lighting, the edges just glow like embers. 
Now yellow is one of my least favorite colors, but something about this fluorescent yellow acrylic, it just went with the vibe. Thankfully, one of the only issues I had when I was cutting all of my acrylic was one of the pieces didn't quite cut on one of the edges. But when that happens, it's pretty easy to fix. So how did we end up after all of that cutting? Surprisingly well actually. All of the holes were basically millimeter perfect and all the components actually fit in the cutouts. I tested the fitment on just about everything I could and I was pleasantly surprised with how well everything fit up. Honestly, with how complex this design was, I was honestly anticipating a disaster. Of course, that's not to say that I did everything perfectly, because anytime you do stuff like this, there's always going to be something that isn't quite measured correctly, or maybe the offset was just a bit off, and it just never lines up perfectly. The part I was most terrified about fitting was the keyboard itself, but thankfully it pretty much did except for this one cutout, and I don't know why I tried to make this so close to the dip switches but yeah that needs to be enlarged. But the actual keyboard cutout pretty much fits spot on. If I mess this up then I basically have to recut everything because if that's not gonna fit then that's the whole case right there. But it actually fit very well even given how small my tolerances are. I'm dealing with half a millimeter maybe and if I mess that up then it's not gonna stay in the case and yeah, I just really had to nail that and I actually did it. Thankfully, all of the issues I could solve just by recutting the acrylic that I had already cut. You'll see, I don't know how I messed up on that keyboard port. I had it right on all the other layers except for one for some reason. And of course, I had to make a provision that's larger for that. But given all of the mistakes that I made that were pretty easily fixable, this came out way better than I anticipated. You can see the LED strip that I put in the front there and that should light up the whole keyboard from the front. I'm really surprised that it came out this well because I've done projects that were a lot less complex with a lot more mistakes than this one. I think it was worth it to do that 3D rendering because it really helped me make sure all of the cuts were in the right spot. Let me know what you guys think of how it looks so far. Even though we're miles away from being totally complete, it is definitely a step in the right direction and we at least have a case that we can start working with now. Now I didn't want to make this video too long but I was very eager to see how everything was going to fit with all the wiring and making sure that I had all of the cuts made and provisions for all the wiring because that was the next step I was actually dreading. I actually really enjoy wiring and that's I guess why I do it a lot but something about this build was a bit more daunting than a lot of other wiring tasks I've done. Thankfully I did make myself another wiring schematic that I even had to follow myself because yeah there's just a lot of stuff going on here. Even though the wiring and circuits are pretty straightforward, it is still a lot of wiring that needed to be routed pretty accurately and also cramped and stuffed into this tiny spot. First I'm throwing in the toggle switches because these are basically the bases for where all the wiring is going to go to and from. After some test fitting, I realized that the port that I was going to use was not actually quite small enough. So here I am just doing a small modification on that to try and make it fit a little bit better. The smallest toggle switch, that is going to be controlling the LED strip on the front. And I wanted that to be independent so I could turn that on and off regardless of the keyboard state. Here I am just wiring up a BT500 wireless adapter and I actually got these without any of the USB ports or switches on top of them so if you guys are interested in that you can ask the manufacturer and they will just send you a blank bare one. This is the adapter that I put into all of my wireless conversions and even though it is a little bit more expensive it is totally worth it. I just installed the front voltmeter display and even though it doesn't really serve a function it does look cool and I might have made the pocket a little bit too big with my layer stacking that's fine I just took up that space with some foam. Stacking more layers here you can kind of see how I'm threading the wires through and hopefully I made all of the provisions correct and so far it seems to be working out. Now moving on to the battery and charge circuits and I did make one fatal flaw with my measuring. 
When I originally measured the main PCB for the keyboard, I didn't take into account the um, solder pads and all the components. So I just measured from the fiberglass and that is not the correct measurement. So it's actually about one millimeter taller than it should have been. Here I am cutting the switch off of the charge circuit because that is a little bit too tall too. Because of that mistake, this was supposed to be a acrylic barrier between these components and the main PCB, but I had to make a provision to make the main PCB actually sit down where it was supposed to. So here I am just creating my own softer barriers between the PCB and the other components. I could definitely fix this problem, but I figured right now this is more of just a prototype, so I'm just going to go with what I can without having to redo the whole case at this point. Next, I'm laying the wires from the charge circuits to the bottom toggle switch. This lower toggle switch is going to allow me to change from battery 1 to battery 2 independently, and the middle switch position is going to be both batteries off. First, I'm running the positive leads, and then I'll move on to the grounds. So the bottom toggle switch is flipping from battery to battery, and the top toggle switch is going to allow me to switch from wired to wireless modes. For some reason that positive lead was giving me some issues but I finally got it. And now let's work on the grounds routing them all the way over to that bottom toggle switch. I'm just basically mirroring both sides of these so one side of the switch is for battery 1 and charge circuit 1 and the other side of the switch is for battery 2 and charge circuit 2. You can actually see on that top layer how I'm going to be routing these traces up and around and there's only going to be a small channel that holds all of these wires. When I keep adding more wires it starts to get a little unruly so I might later just tack down some tape to keep it all in place while I collapse all of the layer stacks onto each other. Here I am now wiring up the external USB Type-C port. This is going to serve two functions. One of them is allowing me to plug this into a computer and use it as a wired keyboard. And the other one is allowing me to pull energy from the wall or a computer and feed it back into the batteries. Now I'm running that positive lead all the way over to that smaller blue toggle switch. And this is going to allow me to feed power to that lighting controller. I was going to use an Arduino Nano to power the NanoPixel LEDs and allow them to have some crazy animations and stuff like this, but this small PCB does it and you don't have to program anything or code anything and it's very cheap and it's pretty dang tiny. This LED strip is definitely overkill for this small of a case, but I already had it, so I'm throwing it in there. This controller just gets power and ground, and then it goes power and ground and data to the LED strip. I actually killed one of my LED strips because I accidentally fed it 12 volts and it really wanted 5 volts, so yeah, it kind of made some crispy noises. Next, I'm tying in a whole bunch of grounds to this middle pin here. In hindsight, I definitely think I could have made this look a lot cleaner or at least tie them in at different points so there's not this giant wad of grounds on this pin, but I just went with it. I was kind of going wire by wire here, but I think I should have just waited till I knew all of the grounds that needed to connect at this point and then just twisted them all together to make one junction. Because I want all of the grounds tied together, I'm also then jumping this pin to the middle pin of the upper switch. Now I'm moving on to the keyboard connections and that's where I'm taking the wireless ground and tying that into the upper toggle switch. Next up is the green data line from the wireless controller and tying that into the bottom of the top toggle switch. Now onto the white data line again from the wireless converter to the top toggle switch. And now I'm moving on to the keyboard connection and making that attachment to the top toggle switch. And once we have both the white data lines from the keyboard port and the wireless converter, we can then move on to the green data lines on both of those. Again, I probably could have taken a little bit more time and got all of these connections a little bit cleaner on these toggle switches, but at this point, I was just excited to get everything together and see if it was actually going to work. I was wondering why I still had some leads left over from my voltmeter and then I checked my schematic and I figured out where those lines went. 
Now I'm just tying in the ground from the lighting controller and also then throwing on the positive so that I can switch it on and off. And finally here I was left over with three positive wires and I thought that these were going to go somewhere but I really just needed to tie them together. I probably should have anchored them at one of the positive points but I just let them float. And finally, for a marginal sense of safety, I'm wiring up the batteries last. I don't know how I made that first lead way too short considering it was right there and I measured it already, but at this point it was pretty late in the day and I had been working on this off and on pretty much all day. At this point, I was just glad that all of the wires seemed to be fitting in their correct spot, so that means I didn't make any huge mistakes with my cutting, at least in terms of provisions for the wiring. Now with both batteries all wired up, I can finally attempt to assemble the rest of the case, and this was a little bit challenging because those wires definitely didn't want to stay put. But with a little bit of wiggling, I was able to get all the wires into the appropriate spot with enough room to make the case fully collapse on itself. With nine different layers is definitely not the easiest thing to work on and to get assembled, but once you have it, it's pretty solid. The only components I didn't put in yet are the four LEDs, but that shouldn't be that big of an issue. Look at how cool it looks right now. And here I am trying to turn it on for the first time and... It seems like some of it's working, but not all of it. So my voltmeter seems to be working, and my wireless adapter seems to be working, but for some reason the keyboard itself doesn't seem to be lighting up or turning on. So both batteries, the voltmeter, and the wireless adapter are working, but curiously the keyboard itself and also my LED strip are not working. So that means either I broke some stuff or I wired things incorrectly, which is what I actually think happened. At this point I had been working on it all day and even though I really wanted to troubleshoot and figure out how to get everything working, I figured now is a good time to stop and I'll come back to this with a fresh pair of eyes. Hopefully it's nothing major, but you guys will have to wait for part 3 on to see if I get this thing actually working. With that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. This build is certainly far from over and I can't wait to show you guys the next steps. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.